I don't normally like to talk about drugs in my YouTube videos. Uh, however, I have discussed uh, a type of drug that's popular among bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts, fitness enthusiasts called clenbuterol. Uh, clenbuterol is a, uh, considered a repartitioning agent in that it tends to build muscle and cause you to lose fat at the same time. As I pointed out in my video about clenbuterol, however, there's a lot of myths about clenbuterol. Uh, clenbuterol is what they call a beta-2 agonist, meaning that it kind of works in the body similar to the way uh, catecholamines such as epinephrine, epinephrine and norepinephrine work. Uh, these chemicals uh, are produced uh, uh, in the adrenal gland, for example, ep epinephrine. It tends to initiate a cascade in lipocytes or fat cells that results in the production of adenosine cyclase, cyclic AMP. Uh, to make a long story short, it tends to cause fat cells to release their fat so the fat can be oxidized. So uh, at the same time, clenbuterol uh, as a beta-2 agonist, it also seems to um, stimulate muscle protein synthesis pathways. How it does this is a little bit more complicated. Uh, what I pointed out in my uh, article, I mean in my uh, video about uh, clenbuterol, is that the amounts that are needed to build muscle are considerably greater than what is needed to lose body fat. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the muscle building effect has largely been shown in animals. That's where clenbuterol came from. It came from, originally came from uh, studies uh, or observations of horses that were given clenbuterol that showed considerable increase in muscle mass. However, the doses given to these animals were far greater that could ever be tolerated by a human. What, what the bottom line means is that clenbuterol, when it comes to human use, has far more use as a repartitioning agent, or in other words, something that will help you build a little bit of muscle, but may help you considerably stimulate fat loss. Uh, the problem with clenbuterol and other beta-2 agonists, such as formaterol and salbutamol, is the fact that uh, beta adrenic receptors which these drugs interact with are very sensitive and they they can basically detect when you're taking these drugs and they tend to get desensitized after only about three weeks what happens is the receptors actually close down the beta receptors or the beta adrenic receptors when that happens there is no activity of these drugs they simply stop working so most of the drugs are temporary, but that's not the main problem with these drugs. Uh, you know, clenbuterol and the other ones, uh, the beta-2 agonists that I mentioned earlier. The problem with these drugs is that uh, the beta-2 receptor, this, you have to understand there's three basic kinds of beta adrenic receptors in the human body. You have the beta-1 receptor is largely in the heart. The uh, beta-2 receptors in smooth muscle, uh, skeletal muscle, and also in the lungs. Uh, that's, this is why this is the main use of the beta-2 agonist drugs. They're basically drugs to combat asthma. They help to prevent asthma attacks. They help to treat asthma because they dilate the uh, bronchial tubes and they do so by interacting with beta-2 receptors in the lungs, in the bronchial tubes. The third kind of beta adrenic receptor is called the beta-3 receptor. Uh, this was formerly thought to occur only in animals. The main thing that beta-3 adrenic receptors do is it activates brown adipose tissue, which is a thermogenic type of fat tissue, which converts calories into heat and may help uh, you, also may help you lose body fat by, again, more or less increases metabolism by, again, converting excess calories into heat. Uh, the activity uh, of beta-3 receptors in the human body is still kind of up in the air. Nobody really knows how active they are. However, they do know that beta, uh, I'm sorry, brown adipose tissue or BAT is far more active in humans than was previously thought. It was previously thought only to occur in newborns, infants, and, and in humans, only small deposits like maybe in the upper back remain. But now they know that beta, uh, I'm sorry, brown adipose tissue can be stimulated by uh, factors such as exposure to cold, exposure to certain nutrients, which I'll discuss in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Uh, but uh, the thing to remember is that, uh, again, you know, there are three types of, uh, of beta adrenic receptors. And the important thing to note is the one that is involved with muscle building is the beta 2 receptors. So clenbuterol, formaterol, 
and salbutamol. All these things are what they call beta-2 agonists because they interact with the beta-2 receptor. Uh, but the bad, the problem with these drugs, which I also mentioned in my previous video, is that they're not entirely selective for beta-2 uh, receptors. In other words, there's an overlap where these drugs can also affect beta-1 and even beta-3 receptors. The beta-3 receptor, of course, would be good because that would mean an increase in uh, body fat loss through thermogenic activity. The, uh, the stimulation of beta-1 receptors, however, is more problematic because those, again, are the receptors in the heart. So what, what this means in practical terms is when you take drugs like clenbuterol, if you exceed a certain dosage, you get an overstimulation of the heart. Uh, the heart speeds up. You get what they call tachycardia, which is a ver very rapid heartbeat. The heart rate can get very hot. Heart rate can get very high. In addition, you also get an increase in blood pressure, which could, in some individuals, lead to a stroke. Uh, or, and, and if you if you continue to take these drugs in large doses, I'm talking about clenbuterol, you can eventually get a heart enlargement, which could be pathological in the sense that it sets you up for future congestive heart failure. Now, knowing all this. Drug companies have sought to produce a beta-2 selective agonist drug that is less responsive to, in other words, it's, it's more, it's more, let me, how do I put this? In other words, it's more, it's more selective for the beta-2 receptors with very little beta-1 overlap. This means that it would produce the good effects of the beta-2, such as increased muscle mass and strength without overly affecting the heart. Uh, so this is uh, th this is somewhat comparable to SARMs, which are selective androgen receptor modulated drugs. Very popular. A lot of people uh, are interested in this in the bodybuilding world because they're supposedly replacements for anabolic steroids. But there's an overlapping uh, overlapping concept between this and the selective beta two agonists in the sense that SARMs were developed to provide the anabolic effects of testosterone and anabolic steroid-type drugs without the bad effects such as st stimulation of the prostate and other problems. Now, there's another overlap uh, between these beta-2 agonist uh, selective drugs and uh, SARMs in that, uh, contra contrary to what you may hear on the Internet, SARMs are not entirely selective, of, in other words, for the androgen receptor. What, what, it, what it means is that you still get, when you use SARM drugs, you still get some of the side effects associated with using anabolic steroids and testosterone. You don't get the prostate stimulation effect, but you do get a suppression of your own testosterone levels and lowering of uh, protective a HDL cholesterol. Well, the same thing happens with uh, you know with with the uh, selective beta two agonist drugs. Uh, again, there's always uh, a, a, a overlapping effect, undesirable effect uh, side effect of these drugs because they're not entirely selective. So with that in mind, the Novartis Drug Company has been experimenting with an experimental drug, and it's called, this is a tough one to pronounce, 5-hydroxybenzothiazolone, or 5-HOB. Now, 5-HOB, uh, there's only been one study about, on this particular substance. It's been uh, published in the Journal of Pharmacy and Experimental Therapeutics. I have the study right here, and uh, basically they gave it to rats. Uh, and they gave it to monkeys. They did in vitro, which is isolated cell studies, and they did in vivo stu uh, studies, which is in the body. They gave rats this stuff in the body. I believe it was injected. I'm not sure if it's in an uh, oral form yet, but what it did, uh, they compared it to a beta-2 agonist drug that already exists called uh, called Formaterol. Formaterol is a um, is, it's very similar to clenbuterol. Uh, it's a long-acting beta-2 agonist, meaning it takes a long time for the body to break it down. Uh, it takes uh, the body, for example, to break down clenbuterol, it takes about 72 hours, which is why it shows up so easily in drug tests. Same with formaterol. It's a long-acting uh, drug to treat asthma. And in, in, the, uh, in the study, uh, the one study that was done on 5-HOB, they compared it to formaterol, uh, and it demonstrated full agonist activity. It stimulated cyclic AMP and skeletal muscle cells and skeletal muscle derived membranes, which means it it, it duplicated the anabolic effects of uh, of clenbuterol and muscle. Uh, uh, the uh, the advantages of 5 HOB it had very weak effects on the on the uh, on the on the pumping ability of the heart. It didn't overstimulate the heart, uh, it, and it it uh, it didn't uh, co cause excessive blood pressure. 
Uh, it also didn't cause a, 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 a whereas formiterol did cause an enlargement of the heart, this new drug, 5-HOB, did not cause a, uh, a, uh, an increase in heart, uh, heart size, which is very good. Uh, it also did not adversely affect the ejection fraction or the amount of blood that pumps out of the heart. Uh, which is also very important. Uh, the ejection fraction drops when you have heart disease, meaning your heart, for example, congestive heart failure, you can't pump as much blood uh, out of your heart. Uh, this was given in rats. Oh, here it is, bolus subcutaneous treatment. That means it was given an injection. Uh, again, I don't know whether this will be available in a uh, in a uh, oral form, but uh, what what it uh, what it did here is basically uh, this particular drug is the most selective beta-2 agonist drug they've yet discovered. Bottom line, it will produce the same effects as drugs like Combuterol and Formiterol without the negative effects on the heart. The only bad part is that you have to, according to this initial study, it requires a greater dosage of 5-HOB to equal the uh, anabolic effects produced by Clembuterol and Formiterol. So you've got to take a little bit more of this stuff but the point is that unlike the other drugs, when you when you take large amounts, you get definite side effects in, in your heart. Taking large amounts of this stuff is going to cause very, very minimal side effects on the heart. Now, I, I hasten to add that this is, again, you know, I don't like to write about or even talk about animal studies because they're very preliminary. However, uh, the reason I'm doing this video on this stuff is because these same beta adrenic receptors, beta 1, 2, and 3, exist in the human body just as they exist in the rat. So the odds are that this drug will show very similar effects in humans. And that's the question. What, 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 what follows next is they need to do human studies of this stuff to see, because, you know, just because it didn't produce any side effects in the rats doesn't mean that it's not going to produce side effects in humans because rats and humans very often react differently to drugs. Drugs that adversely affect rats don't affect humans and vice versa. So what, what's, what's required next is human uh, experimentation of this drug. Uh, there is a motivation for the drug company Novar Novartis to, to do these experiments. They cost literally billions of dollars. But the reason that it, they, they have a motivation to do it is because if this drug proves successful, it will be a very useful treatment for treating muscle wasting diseases such as the, uh, cancer, cachexia, which is uh, a extreme loss of muscle in certain types of cancer. It can also be used to treat sarcopenia, which is a loss of muscle mass with age. Uh, and it can also use just to uh, actually just to keep muscle mass on as you get older. That's if it passes muster. Now, if it's shown in human studies to be safe for long term use. They'll turn it into a drug and sell it. What the trade name will be, I couldn't tell you at that time. Uh, this is all very preliminary. The, re the reason I did this video is I thought that the, the idea of having a safe form of clenbuterol is kind of interesting. I mean, it, it'll I mean, this drug theoretically will produce the same uh, body repartitioning effects. In other words, it'll tend to build muscle and, and cause you to lose fat at the same time and, and, uh, and theoretically have almost no side effects. I, I, that's what's been shown in rats. I'm quickly to add, we know evidence of that in humans. I mean, if it if it pans out, this could be a pretty big uh, advance as a uh, well. It's not meant for bodybuilding. I was going to say as a bodybuilding drug, but you can you can be damn sure that if st if this stuff works like it does in rats, a lot of bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts will be interested in this stuff. I mean, you know, again, helping you to lose body fat, build muscle with no bad effects on the heart. That's almost a holy grail. So. Anyway, the stuff is, again, it's called 5-HOB. I'm sure you'll be hearing more about it in the future. This was only the first study, very preliminary study. That's the way they produce drugs. They start out with in vitro or isolated cell studies. Then they move on to animal studies. If the animal studies are successful, then they move on to human studies. The human studies have to go through various phases uh, related to side effects, different types of people. If it passes all of those, and eventually, uh, you know, a, a, a application is submitted by the drug company to the Food and Drug Administration. If everything looks good, the Food and Drug Administration will approve it. Uh, you know, don't hold your breath <laughs> because the average time it takes for the FDA to approve new drugs is anywhere from seven to ten years. So the the shortest amount of time this drug could be available is about a decade from now. 
But again, I thought it'd be interesting. I thought some of you might be interested in, in hearing about this stuff. Uh, uh, I, I uh, you know, the obvious question uh, arises: Will somebody get a hold of the uh, chemical structure? It's right there in the medical journals. I'm sure somebody, uh, some black market company, is probably going to uh, sell a version of it on the black market drug sites. Uh, but you know, even if it does become available, I mean, just about. Uh, Almost all the drugs sold on these sites, other than standard anabolic steroids, are all unapproved drugs. They've never been fully approved for human use. But that doesn't stop some people from selling it, selling the stuff. All you have to do is know a little chemistry and have the molecular structure, and you can produce the drug. Uh, but I would advise you, uh, if this stuff does become available on any of these uh, black market or Internet uh, 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 drug sites, I would strongly advise you not to take it. Uh, even though I've I painted a kind of nice picture of it so thus far with this animal study, again there's no human evidence for it, nothing, zero. They did give it to monkeys, which of course are very closely related to humans in terms of DNA, uh, and it worked very well in monkeys. It uh, again caused the monkeys to lose fat and and uh, build muscle, but again you don't want to take this drug without any human evidence. I strongly advise that. So if you see 5-HOB. Advertising, you know what they're going to give you the pitch, how uh, it's a super clenbuterol, they'll call it. Uh, it's going to cause you to lose fat and build muscle. They'll give you the whole pitch. I'd say don't do it. I wouldn't do it without any, I would insist on human evidence. You want to know if this causes, this might turn out to have some sort of weird side effect in humans that it didn't produce in animals. So I would wait until there's definitive human evidence of its safety and efficacy. So that's about it for this stuff. If you want further information about nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, uh, uh, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that work, ergogenic aids, subscribe today, and much more, by the way. Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, 40 to 50 pages every month, no advertisements, no BS, no bro science, just pure evidence-based information. Uh, if you subscribe, I will... Uh, I will uh, send you an invitation to join my private uh, Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information about nutrition, exercise science, and medicine and health in general. Uh, also, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site. Uh, so current subscribers are welcome to send me short questions uh, about anything they read in uh, Applied Metabolics that, might, that they have further questions about or if they have questions about something else. I'll be happy to answer only current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions. You're welcome to leave comments under these YouTube videos. Uh, I also, you can leave suggestions, uh, topics you want me to cover for future YouTube videos. Uh, uh, although I talked about a, a drug in this video, I tend to not really get into, I, I prefer not to talk about most anabolic drugs like anabolic steroids. Uh, I'd rather not talk about them because uh, even though there's a ton of misinformation, all over the internet about these drugs and in various U YouTube uh, videos. Uh, I don't want to talk about them because Google, who owns YouTube, frowns upon drug-based videos, and I don't want my YouTube channel removed, so I cannot talk about steroids and that type of stuff in my videos, but I will take other suggestions. So uh, that's about it. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter. Thank you for listening.